Good morning. And there's still folks coming in, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk slowly. Uh, um, special thanks to everyone involved in the gala and the teas and coffees and all the goodies. Uh, yesterday, uh, the grand sum of £432.60 uh, was raised, so well done. Uh, for everyone who participated as well. There's also a selection of goodies that can still be purchased, apparently. So afterwards, if there's anything catches your eye, um, I'm sure there's some good things on the table as well for tea and coffee afterwards as well. So uh, many, many thanks. Um, I'm going to be saying a little bit more about last week's events and, and the gala events during the reflection spot, but just um, just to say a, a special thank you um, to Evis for their generous donation of £1,000, which will go towards a, a new camera, a, an additional camera, which will be mounted somewhere around here, which will be forward-facing, uh, so that when we, when we film baptisms, weddings, maybe Remembrance Day when we have the standards coming into the church, it will not simply be the back of folks' heads that we see when we watch the video back, but we'll actually see folks as they are uh, coming into the kirk and so on. And it will mean that you too will be visible. So you'll be able to look at yourselves. And Anyway, that, that's good. Um, special thanks too to all involved. Maybe a special thank you to, to Judith and Lisa um, and everyone involved at the Children's Summer Club uh, last week, which was a great success. I'm going to say more about that um, again during the reflection spot, but um, it, the children not only really enjoyed themselves and learned uh, about Jesus, uh, the good news and so on, but um, I think from what I gathered, the, the helpers uh, enjoyed themselves too. The adults had a good time, so uh, it seemed it was a, very, a great success. The the funeral for Angela Legg will be here in the Edsel Church on Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. here in the church, uh, funeral service, a memorial service. Uh, Tim has requested that if folks can to wear something bright because they want to celebrate uh, Angela's life. So that's 11 o'clock here and then from here, there will be, um, the committal will take place at Park Grove Crematorium, but that's going to be private for the family members only. The Bible study resumes on Wednesday evening at 7.30. We pick up where we left off. We're in chapter 6 of Paul's epistle to the Romans. And, I mean, I don't know if we'll get through 14 verses, but we'll be, uh, we'll, we'll be working in that sort of the first 14 verses, hopefully, but who knows? Um, that's the intention. Also, the history group outings. The next one will take place a week on Tuesday. That's Tuesday the 15th of August, and we're going to visit Old Kenef Church, followed by Burvey and then the Arbuthnot Church. Wonderful heritage, great history associated with these places. So that we'll be starting at 11.30 in Old Kenef, then we'll be heading down to Burvey where we'll have maybe worship, have our lunch there, and then we're going to go on to the Arbuthnot uh, Church. Say more about that again next week. And then the following month in September, we are no, we're not going to be going um, on the third Tuesday, but the first Tuesday in the month. So on Tuesday, 5th of September, we're planning a trip to Edinburgh. So I'll be saying more about this next week, but we're going to be booking a bus. So you're going to have to actually book and give your names in advance so we know exactly how many. Um, I was thinking we could maybe have a couple of pickup points, maybe starting here and, and Brecon or whatever. So we'll get that uh, organized, more about that. But what, I, and what I, we intend doing is starting maybe at St. Giles. We'll go from St. Giles down to um, the National Museum. We could have our lunch in there because there's, there's public toilets and whatnot. 
and from there, from the National Museum, over the road to Greyfriars. So we're looking Reformation, Covenanting, Revolution, all that kind of stuff. That's what we're going to be focusing uh, upon. But with the history, we'll cover a much uh, larger period. Uh, there's so much to see and get through. Uh, I think that's all for now. I'm sure there's others, and uh, for the life of me, they'll come to me when I'm when I've started. But let us worship God. Let us sing to his praise. We do so in a well-known hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. It's number 459 if you're using the church hymnal. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us bow our heads. Lord, our great and gracious God, we gather to celebrate and praise the Ancient of Days and the Lamb who now sits upon the throne, having received all dominion, glory, honor, and power. And we do so by the Holy Spirit who indwells his church and makes him known. We thank you for the Lord of love and peace who has made peace through the blood of his cross and in whose name and by whose mediation we have access day or night to the throne of grace. Fill us afresh this day with a spirit that his fruits may be manifest in our thoughts, words, and deeds. Come among us, make your presence known to all of us. Touch our hearts and minister to our needs and instruct us in the ways of love. Lord, receive from us our sacrifice of praise and our freewill offerings. Take them and use us for the maintenance and the advancement of Christ's kingdom of love, here, near, and far. Continue to build and bless your church by the ministry of the word and sacrament and through the service of your people in worship, works, and witness. Grant us grace to share and live out Christ's gospel of transformation and renewal. Grant us conviction and confidence to keep our eyes firmly focused on Jesus, that we may continue in faith, hope, and love. And what we pray for ourselves, we pray for the church, not only throughout Angus, but throughout our nation, and indeed to the ends of the earth. 
Father, forgive us our transgressions and trespasses, for we have not only broken your holy law, but we have failed to keep it and do it as we ought. Wash and cleanse us of all impurity, and grant us grace to walk before you and one another in the beauty of holiness, integrity, justice, kindness, and love. We thank you for the success of last week's summer club and pray once again that it may bear lasting fruit in both children and adults alike. We thank you that we as a church were able to contribute and participate in the Gala Day celebrations, and we pray your blessing upon this week's program of events. We thank you for Evis's gift to the church here and pray uh, your blessing upon, um, upon all that is done um, in the coming week. We ask your blessing upon the school here in Edsel and, and others elsewhere as the children and teachers prepare to return from their summer holiday break. May they do so refreshed and ready to begin a new term. We pray for our communities and all that live and work in them for their protection, provision, and prosperity. We thank you for holidaymakers and others that periodically join us for worship here in the church and ask your rich blessing be upon them. Comfort the bereaved, heal the sick, feed the poor, shelter the homeless, protect the vulnerable, strengthen the weak, seek the lost, befriend the lonely, challenge the careless, and draw sinners to repentance and faith through Jesus' name, who taught us to say together, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, I just want to repeat what I, what I was saying earlier on. I want to first of all congratulate all those who were involved in the Children's Summer Club last week. I visited uh, on Thursday there, and it you know, I encountered Spider-Man. Uh, I walked on water. And so I'll have these lasting memories, and so we're thankful for that. And, um, but it was very obvious to me, both on Thursday and Friday, and what I've heard and speaking to the children at the lunch and so on and on Friday, that they are truly had a great time, so it was a great success. And um, uh, onwards and upwards with the children's uh, ministry and all those involved in it. And before we go on, because I'm going to talk about the gala, <clears throat> and just make one or two comparisons as I was things I was observing yesterday. But on Friday, um, they concluded with, with a lunch and parents were invited along and they sat down and had food and drink together. And fellowship is, and hospitality is, um, is part of our calling as Christians and as the church. And it was good. And, it, you know, it was, everyone had a good time. But just before they sat down, they played and the children sang along the blessing. And I thought I would just share it with you um, now. After the service today, we don't want to show the photo, any photographs during the service because they're recorded. But there's going to be an opportunity. We're going to show over 100 pictures from the holiday club. Uh, so after the benediction, they will appear on the screen. So you will have an opportunity to see some of the activities and those who were involved uh, in them after the service. But I thought I would just share, because it's, it's a lovely version with the children singing. It's only a, a minute and a bit. So I thought I would share it with you now, the blessing. We always sing the blessing at a baptism. And so this is the blessing with the children singing.
go. It's very nice, isn't it? It's good. Yeah, fun. Well, despite the rain, we were quite fortunate. I think those who were setting up yesterday for the gala on the muir here must have got a real soaking. But the rain went off in the afternoon. It wasn't bad. We had the odd shower, but nothing, nothing heavy. But again, I just want to thank everyone who was involved uh, in the gala, particularly those who were serving teas and coffees and goodies uh, next door here. Uh, as I was saying, hospitality is an important uh, call upon the church. And we see not only the gala queen before you, and I'm going to be making reference to our gala king today, and so that's going to be one of the comparisons that I'll be making in my sermon, but you also see our own gala king and queen from the church who are sitting down here, so it's, it's really good. So, and, um, and again, just we greatly appreciate the generosity of Eva's in providing us um, with a generous gift. And, you know, um, even Rangers got into the spirit of generosity yesterday <laughs> and have given Celtic a three-point start in the league. So that's, that was really kind of them, just to get into the spirit of things. Um, but I was, I, was, I was walking around yesterday and there was one or two things that really caught my eye. And I, I started making comparisons. And the first thing that really surprised me was I walked out and I got in front of the, uh, the trailer and there were knights. I encountered knights in full armor with swords. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And uh, so they were, they were, and it reminded me of Paul's words to put on the full armor of God. In other words, we are to put on the breastplate of righteousness, so we're to act with integrity and so on. We're to put on the belt of truth. We are to wear the helmet of salvation. We're ha we have, though, we're to wear those shoes of the gospel of God's grace. In other words, be willing to tell and share the good news with others. We are to take up the shield of faith, and we're to wield the sword of the Spirit. And they were, I saw them, they were charging back and forward with the children um, on, the, on the muir in front here. And so that, that was really interesting. And then, of course, there came <coughs> that call from Evas to those who were receiving checks. So there was the good news that they were announcing. The, there was a tannoy system. And so they were announcing good news near and far. And again, it just reminded me, that's the call of the church. We have good news to herald, to make, to share with all men and women, boys and girls. And there was a great mix of folks on the muir uh, yesterday. There were also races. Well, there were pig races, to be honest, but, <laughs> uh, but there were races. And it reminded, again, me of our call to run the race, to keep the faith. And there's a definite, you know, we're to keep our eyes focused on that end point, who is Christ Jesus and Christ likeness, and so on. There was food drink and fellowship. And as Christians, you and I are called to communion with God and one another as a people rooted and built up and encouraging one another in love. The Christian life, I was reminded as I was walking around yesterday, is primarily a feast rather than a fast. There was a healthy mixture of young and old and middle-aged alike reminding us again that the church is the family of God, and it's for all ages. It's for everyone. And then there was finally that convivial, well, there's so much more, but there was that convivial and celebratory mood reminding us again that we are called to be a joyous as well as a caring people. We ought, the joy of the Lord ought to be our strength, and it ought to be infectious. You know, we can, it's, it's good news that we are in the business of sharing. So we live in light of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, uh, His Son. 
Now, we're going to be returning to the gala uh, in, our ser- in my sermon today. So. But for now, thinking about celebrations, we're going to sing, well, I was going to say a well-known song, but I don't know how well-known this will be. It's certainly well-known to me. Um, but it used to be sang, it's from the Mission Praise. If you're familiar with the Mission Praise church hymnal, it's certainly prominent in there, and it was often sung by the children in former churches that I, that I was in. Do you know this song, Come and Celebrate? Come on and celebrate his gift of... Well, I'm killing it, but you know what I mean. But that's... That. Well, will I ask Lorraine to play it through first so you can get your ear in? Maybe that's what we'll do. Is that it? Good. David's going to read to us from the New Testament Scriptures. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is New Testament, Corinthians 2, chapter 2. Hear the word of God with these words. Stand firm. So I made up my mind that I would not not make another painful visit to you. For if I grieve you, who is left to make me glad but you whom I have grieved? I wrote as I did so when I came, I should not be distressed by those who ought to make me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you that you would all share my joy. For I wrote to you out of great distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. 
If anyone has caused grief, he has not so much grieved me as he has grieved all of you to some extent, not to put it too severely. The punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient for him. Now instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. The reason I wrote to you was to see if you would stand the test and be obedient in everything. If you forgive anyone, I also forgive him. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan may not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Now, when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened the door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother, Titus, there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, to the other the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from God. Amen. And may God add his blessings of those holy words and to his name be uh, glory and praise. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to sing once again, thinking about Christ's kingship. Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. It's number 470 if you're using the church hymnal. to return to the portion of scripture that David read to us a few moments ago 
And I want to read once again verse 14, and that's going to be our focus today. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of Him everywhere. Again? Oh, I thought we were doing that. Our theme to mark Edsel Gala weekend or week is our Gala King. Yesterday, the Edsel Gala began with a crowning of the Gala Queen, Libby, uh, who led the procession up the main street to the muir in front of the church here. Christ, we're reminded in our text, is the one who leads his people in triumphal procession and will do so in person at the end of this age. And with that in mind, I thought it might be appropriate to draw a few comparisons and parallels between our Edsel Gala and our everlasting Gala King. Consider, therefore, just as Edsel Gala requires planning, preparation, and participation. So God fulfills His plans and purposes and promises to us in and through our Gala King, Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. We have the victory in Christ. We are triumphant in Jesus' name, the Bible reminds us. We are more than conquerors, we are told, in and through Jesus. And what the Bible reminds us and, and points out is that Christ is the answer to our greatest needs. He is our prophet, whose word is given to instruct us and lead us. He is the priest who is our one and only mediator with God the Father. He ever lives to make intercession for us. He is our King who leads us in triumphal procession. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has reconciled, redeemed, and restored our relationship to God and one another. And He renews His people by His Spirit, and invites all to come to God through Him. You see, He came that we might have life, and that we might have it and enjoy it abundantly, spiritually, and everlastingly. And hence, He leads His church in triumphal procession. We as a people are called to follow Him like the triumphant Roman emperors who led their people back after conquest. So, Christ, we follow him who leads us in triumph. Christ was anticipated. He was foretold throughout the Old Testament period. If you are following our daily Bible reading, oh, we're just about there. By the end of the year, we should be finished the whole, completed the whole Bible. But today's reading, or one of today's readings, is Daniel 7. And there's a picture in Daniel 7, prophesied centuries before the coming into our world of Jesus Christ. We have the prophecy of the ascension and the coronation of Christ, who ascends to the Father's side, where He is crowned. He appears before the Ancient of Days, and given to Him is all dominion and power and glory and splendor and honor and so on. And He is the one, you see, our Gala King, whom we follow now and always. That's why the Father says, this is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. Hear and heed Him, or changing the metaphor. He's, he's not like the shepherd we see today who drives his flock, but rather he goes before them and they follow after, keeping their eyes firmly fixed upon him. That's the way to victory. He is the way to triumph. 
Christ appeared in the person of Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father, born of the Virgin Mary, in the fullness of time to achieve our victory, the salvation of his people, and our triumphal procession to guarantee it. He leads us in the present by his word and by the Spirit, but he will come again at the end of the age and lead us in person in triumphal procession into the new heavens and new earth. Just as Edzo Gala begins or began with a joyous procession, so God's people are part of and will form a jubilant procession. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. You see, we are called to communion with God in and through Him. It's always in Christ. You see, we are called not only to be a, a holy people, united to the Father through the Son and one another, rooted and built up in love, but we're called to be a happy people in Him. And then you see, in knowing Him gives us cause for thanksgiving and praise and joy. We are called, moreover, to Catholicity. And just as there was a number, there was the procession that preceded and a crowd here, so we are called to togetherness. We're called to recognize our need of one another in Christ as one people. He is the head. We are the body. We follow him. That's the call. Remember, team, together everyone achieves more. And we recognize our need of one another because he has given to us different offices, different gifts, different graces, and we pull and we work together. Everyone has a part to play as the procession makes its way to glory. And we are called, you see, to camaraderie, to friendship and fellowship. And we are reminded of that yesterday we just, with the importance of hospitality and, and meeting together. And that's what we are to be about as a church as well. That's why not only gathering together, but it's, it's lovely after the service to sit down and have a coffee and tea together and to catch up and so on. Fellowship is important. Developing friendships, communication and so on is important. Just as Edzo Gala began yesterday with the Gala Queen leading the procession from the Ingalls Hall in sight of the famous Edsel Arch up the main street here to the Muir, so God's church is and will be led in triumphant procession by our gala king, Christ Jesus. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. God's people are called to fix their eyes on him, to look to him, to trust in him. He is the focal point for the church's life, for our mission of her triumphant procession and hence progression. We are not called to be passive or static, but we are a people on the move, growing in knowledge and grace, growing together in fellowship and love. God's people, you see, walk by faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior called to trust and obey him above all others, above the cacophony of voices out there in the world. We must obey God rather than men was the call of the apostles or the cry of the apostles faced with persecution way back in the first century. God's people follow Jesus' example for triumphant procession, knowing that the cross is the way to the crown. 
His cross guarantees our crown as it guaranteed his crown. But he also says to us, take up your cross and follow me. I was, I was reminded as I was looking on the Edsel Arch, which we had a picture of earlier, of another arch. That arch was built, as you know, in 1887 to commemorate the lives of the 13th Earl of Dalhousie and his wife who died just days apart. It was a memorial. But it got me thinking of the arch that Claudius, I've been reading some early history recently, and of Claudius's conquest of Britain. Well, it was a wee bit of England, to be honest, but they say Britain. They never conquered here. Uh, or they tried. They had, a, they had a station, a fort over by. But Claudius, when he returned to Rome, built a triumphant arch to celebrate his victory. And there's an arch of swords in the Bible which we will march through into the presence of God. We find it in Revelation 4 where there's a, a rainbow likened to an em the color of an emerald, the color of peace and plenty. And it gives us access into the presence of God. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ who leads his people into that unique and special and loving relationship with the living God. And hence, we are more than conquerors. Always in Jesus Christ. He leads us in triumphal procession. Just as Edzo Gala is an annual celebration. I was asking one or two folks, and no one could tell me. So, I believe, this is just a, a, a good hunch, let's say, that our Edzo Gala has emerged from the medieval holy day. Because the original Edsel church was dedicated to St. Lawrence. And St. Lawrence's feast day falls on the 10th of August. I don't think it's a coincidence that our gala is also in August. I think it's pro probably emerged out of that. And, and so we too, are called to remember and celebrate God's awesome love, His grace and mercy towards us in Jesus Christ every Lord's Day, like the medieval church did here in Edsel when they remembered St. Lawrence. You know the story of St. Lawrence, who was commemorated here. He was a, a deacon in the Church of Rome, back in the third century, 200 and something. And he died in the Valerian persecution. He was put to death by the Roman authorities who demanded that he hand over the church's wealth. And they gave him a couple of days to do so. And of course, when the government official, the emperor's official, appeared before Lawrence at the appointed day and time and demanded that he hand over the treasures of the church. Lawrence opened the door, and there were the poor and the widows and the blind and the lame and folks, the sick, and those who felt they needed help, there was the church. And they put him to death for it. They roasted him alive on a gridiron. So you usually see him presented with a gridiron. And he thanked the Lord. He prayed to the, the Lord. He thanked the God that he was able to bear witness to the faith. Because he knew where he was going that Christ was leading them in triumphal procession, even through death, to glory. And that was his hope. And you can read all about him. But he was, our previous church was dedicated to St. Lawrence, and of course, Lawrence Kirk. That's a, the place is named after him, just up the road as well. Let us regularly celebrate our being God's children in Christ. 
That's why we gather every week. And at other times, special occasions, let us regularly celebrate our belonging to God in His church in Christ. Come what may. Let us regularly celebrate our becoming the people God wants us to be in Christ, who goes before us and leads us in triumphal procession until the day when we stand before him and we shall be as he is, altogether triumphant, glorious, without spot or stain. Finally, just as Ed Zogala supports many worthy causes through Evas and others, so King Christ calls us to serve God and one another in love. Through us, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. You see, we're called to make Jesus known in our worship. He is the focus, the focal point of our worship. We're called to make Jesus known in the good works that we do in love. So we share and we reach out to others and and do works of kindness and care and compassion and so on. We're called to make Jesus known in our witness. That's the mission of the church. It's not about making the church known. It's about making Jesus known. That is the call. And the church grows as people respond by faith in Jesus Christ. Well, may we continue to do this and celebrate always our gala king. His name is Jesus, and he does and he will lead us in triumphal procession. May he add his blessing to these few thoughts. Amen. I'm going to hand over to the choir. We're going to lead us in praise. going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those that you have gathered here to worship and to work and to witness for you in Edsel. 
We thank you for the diversity of men and women, of young and old, of those who bring many years of faithful work in the Master's footsteps, and for those whose Christian walk is just beginning. We thank you for your servant, our pastor, for his faithfulness Sunday by Sunday. And we remember too the contribution of our minister's wife, so often understated and unvalued. And yet we thank you for the love that they share and for the encouragement and support and patience that enable Wayne to fulfil his duties. We thank you for all those who hold church office, for those who administer the funds and the duties of the associated with the presbytery. We thank you for our elders. But perhaps most of all, we thank you for those who sit alongside us Sunday by Sunday, who would describe themselves as just ordinary church members. We thank you for them and we thank you for your working, your purposes out in their lives. We think of Christians of high profile. We think of those who witness in sport and in politics and in entertainment, people that we read about or hear about in the news, not always for the best of reasons. We pray for those who are targets of those who would seek to disrupt the church. We pray for those who witness on a global stage. We think of heroes of our generation, of scholars, theologians and authors who enhance our understanding of your truths. We think of people like Billy Graham, of Desmond Tutu, of Martin Luther King, and others. We think perhaps even of our own Queen, our late Queen. And we thank you that at all levels of our society, there are those who will trust and obey. We thank you for your great accomplishments among just ordinary church members. We thank you for those who stand up when there is a call for extra duties. We thank you especially for the work among the children, for school holiday clubs and Bible camps and the Scripture Union and other organisations. We thank you for those who attend and those who staff these occasions. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue with us as we seek to fulfil your purposes in our lives and in our community and in your church here in Edsel. In Jesus' name, Amen. We conclude our time of worship by singing a, a, another well-known hymn, Be Thou My Vision, <coughs> O Lord My Heart.
us conclude. And now as we leave this place of worship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among you all, now and forevermore.